Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Shua Khan. Um, I am going to be talking about uh, discovering Linux kernel subsystems in use. Um, I think Kate mentioned earlier when she was doing the welcome, um, talking about um, how we are doing this for open uh, in open APS case. Uh, let's first start like a talk about why is it important um, understanding workload requirements. Why do we care? The reason we care about this is um, multiple, really. Sizing and memory and storage for a workload. We want to be able to, especially when we are talking about automotive, talking about medical, we want to be able to size the system, um, memory, storage, and all of those, and then also configure and tune the kernel. And uh, that's uh, important as well. And configure and tune the system. Those two are two different things, uh, tuning the kernel, uh, enabling the right configuration options uh, in the kernel that work for us. Say, for example, stack protection. We want to be able to do that uh, if that is important um, for the workload. And the other things is configuring and tuning uh, the system. Say our workload requires large number of files. We want to make sure, and processes, maybe it kicks off several threads. So we want to make sure that we have, our system is configured um, when we have maximum load or when we have, um, when the system is in heavy use. So we want to be able to tune that. And then the lastly, this is re, um, imp really important uh, aspect is that we want to be able to identify um, tests that we care about uh, to avoid regressions as the new uh, releases come out, kernel releases, and then also be able to write tests. If we think that the existing tests um, need to be either enhanced, new tests to be written. So for two different things, avoiding reg regressions as we keep taking new kernel bits, um, and, and the platform too, and then evaluating safety. So um, then, uh, so we, we, first of all, we need to understand what our workload uh, requ requirements are and resource usages. So we do that uh, system information gathering at three different points. One is before starting the workload, while the workload is running, and after stopping the workload. So those are the three different points we take uh, pulse of the system. What do we gather? Um, uh, these are the things that we want to gather. Uh, supported system calls on the system. Um, we, we have a few tools that we can use to do that. AU syscall, um, which is part of RDD um, tool set that can dump all of the system calls for uh, a particular architecture. And then also uh, this, the second script, check syscalls uh, script is part of the kernel. Um, that it can, uh, it can uh, tell us the system calls, supported system calls on a architecture. Then the, uh, we also want to check the features, supported features. So we can do that using um, a script that is part of the kernel sources, which is get feature, um, get feature dot pl is get feet dot pl and then the other thing is uh sys um, sys can tell us information about system parameters the limits and so on and scheduler what kind of schedule reasoning priorities etc and then lastly we also want to understand what modules kernel modules are loaded um, loaded in the system so we use ls mod for that and there are other uh, obviously, other things, LSUSB tells you USB ports available, and then LSPCI tells you other things. But for now, we'll talk about these things. And while the system, so we talked about what we want to get before we start our workload. Uh, that tells us almost like a baseline, what is running currently. And then um, we want to gather, uh, we start our workload and then start gathering um, system parameters and then loaded module, currently loaded modules. Because of some workloads, the one that we played with extensively, OpenAPS, it does go and load and unload modules. So we want to see the differences in what is the workload, um, how, how the workload is changing things. Is it loading new modules, unloading some, 
and so on. And then also how it's changing the system parameters, limits, scheduler, priority, et cetera. And we let the workflow run um, for however long we want to run it. We'll get into a little bit in, into how, how we want to trace the system, but um, right now we are talking about the when do we gather system information. So after we stop the workload, we probably run it for 30 minutes, two hours, doesn't matter. Then we, after stopping it, we go and look at system parameters and loaded, uh, currently loaded modules. So this tells us a couple of things. One is, is the workload behaving um, correctly? So a good workload, good well-behaving workload would probably set the system back to another state. Um, is it doing that? So, and then also we find out what's happening. Is it loading modules and tons of modules and leaving them loaded? Or is it upping the system limits and leaving those um, left? Uh, I mean, not cleaning up after itself. Okay, so with that, I will uh, walk you through a couple of uh, what the uh, output of these things looks like and how you can use uh, I mentioned um, a use is called. You can actually ask it to say, tell me all of the timer related system calls that are supported. So it can tell you um, when I ran this on my system, it tells you these are all things. And then the number associated with this is system call number. System call numbers can change um, from architecture to architecture. Um, so it, it is it is this information and the number associated with it is important to us. And check system calls sh what that does is it tells us um, the ones that are not implemented. Like you can see on my system when I ran it on my test system, these are all the ones that are not supported or not implemented. And it's it's a longer list. And then now we switch into the other tool I mentioned, the feature uh, list tool. So you can list the fe features. You can also check and see this, I ran it on x86. It shows you what uh, features are supported. Some of the in important ones, um, like for example, um, BPF related ones there that is showing. And then stack protector, I am looking for, specifically I'm saying here, you can see I am looking for um, grep. I'm, I'm looking at the feature list, I'm looking for a stack protector, what kind of stack options are, um, does it have enabled? And it shows me uh, have stack protector on and, and then uh, what else is available. And then memory leaks, so you can grab for specific specific features like DMA and so on. So you can do um, grab for specific things. So, and then LSMOD, if you look at the LSMOD tool that I mentioned before, you can look for a specific modules or have, if you don't have that grab in there, you can, uh, it'll dump every single uh, module that's currently loaded. And in addition to that, it'll show you what is the, what's the usage count of those. Um, like for example, video buff to common has four users, four other modules have, um, are holding reference to it. So un until all of those modules are unloaded, you cannot unload video buff to common, for example. Okay, so what we do is uh, we have gathered different uh, information. We gathered um, all of the things that we talked about uh, like for example, the modules, um, modules, configuration options, especially the modules and system parameters. So we look for changes in between two points uh, before loading the workload, uh, before starting the workload. And once we start, we are continuously saving this information, we find differences. So we can figure out what exactly uh, is the workload footprint, um, lack of a better word. Let's let's use a different word. What are the resources the workload uses? And we can narrow the subsystems that way and say, these are the subsystems we want to care about more when we are running regression tests and when the new releases come out, 
are these, we're watching those, it's like our watch points. Okay, so I will continue tracing. Um, okay, tracing is not for just debugging. Tracing is traditionally used for debugging and we are using tra tracing in this context for a very different purpose. Um, when, when I say tracing workload, I'm talking about the even tracing feature available in the Linux kernel. You can enable uh, system-wide tracing and say, give me all of the events that you can possibly trace, generate a trace for it. And before starting the workload, we enable system-wide tracing and we can disable the system-wide tracing after stopping the workload. So we'll get a snap uh, shot of all of the events that have happened after, um, while this workload is running. So you will see the reference here, uh, you will see um, this is one that's um, you, current subsystem used by, we, we have done a couple of uh, uh, blogs about this. And then you can uh, take a look at those for de in details on how uh, we did the um, uh, gathered traces. So once you have that, now we know that we we know the system calls um, system calls that are supported on our system. When we know the system call numbers associated with them, and then in the traces we see the system calls um, that are. Uh, system calls that are used by the workload. And then we can go look at identify functions and system calls usages and map them to kernel subsystems. Like for example, if you see get timer call, for example, uh, being called, then we know that the timer um, subsystem is being used. Um, that's one of the subsystems all workloads use. Um, that's um, not a great example, but if you see calls to setting priority, for example, or um, any kind of scheduler changes it might be doing priority levels on different processes and thread priorities, then you will know uh, some of the useful information that's coming up. So far, um, this is all high level information. Uh, we do not know specifically, the, uh, we do not know what the low level information is, meaning fine grain information. For example, um, we have done um, analysis of overall open APS load. We ran it. We uh, enabled system-wide tracing in its uh, open APS init in the cron tab. And then we went in and it, it, it has the init script. So we enabled tracing system-wide tracing in the init script. And then we let it run for a couple of hours and we stopped uh, the workload. And then we took this snapshot of this entire two hours worth of log and we analyzed um, system calls and modules it's loading. And we have seen a couple, uh, couple three modules it does load and then unload. We have determined what exactly it does it use. And we have done these experiments on a Raspberry Pi running OpenAPS um, workload. <clears throat> However, what we do not have is we wanted to also understand what happens, say, for example, um, a when individual open APS commands are run. For example, open APS might go and say, user says, tell me, give me pump history. What has happened with this insulin pipe pump in the last um, last hour or two or whatever? And then also how much insulin is left in that pump? Those are the ones it will be lost if we have just this large gain system view. Um, we do not, uh, we won't be able to isolate when for uh, the tracing or resource usage that happens just for those individual command runs. And then this, um, and when errors happen also. So for this, we used a different uh, tool, S-Trace. S-Trace, what S-Trace does is again, this is also heavily used for debugging so far, but we wanted to use this for a use this for a different purpose. Uh, in this case, is we want to understand um, run S, S trace, run various commands with S trace, and say, hey, what are we um, seeing? What kind of system calls this particular command is using? 
and what kind of system um, resources it's using, the files it's opening, for example. And then also pay attention to failure cases as well. So this a blog, um, the, uh, the link I put in here, talks about more in detail um, about all of that. Okay, let's see. Um, Estrace command, you can create system calls and signals, and you can run it in multiple different modes. Uh, one is a full mode where you can get um, the full complete information, um, and you can run it in summary mode where it'll identify, uh, summarize the system calls and see invocations of those. What we have done for this is we looked at open APS commands and we um, picked the ones that would make sense to us. Get insulin pump model, for example, that would be something that, uh, um, that would go out and then open APS will query the pump and then at the time and then battery levels and um, a few commands that we want, we're interested in. and more of that. And you can look at um, this pump history, insulin pump, temporary, temporary basal rates, and then insulin. This is how we wanted to kind of find out what happens when we run these commands. What uh, system um, activity is associated with these command runs. And this is a list of uh, various commands in here. And let's go to where we have um, information about these. I have some slides that show um, pump information. So like I mentioned, s dash c will give us a summary of the summary of the activity. And then the full, if you remove this dash c option, it gives you a full trace. When we ran pump history command, what we have seen is that um, the output on this left side, you can see run pump history command. So it prints all these, uh, this is the output from the command, retrieving pump history since when we ran this command. Um, and it's telling us that it cannot connect to um, a, a the pump. This is the, it's trying to open dev SPI dev and it cannot open that. So, and it's also saying pump is busy. So this device is in use. So this is a one of the busy paths we traced. Um, and then what corresponds to it? This is the right side. What I'm showing is the analysis we did. Process startup, of course, that has to happen, management. And then it goes and opens um, SysFS file, this um, uh, associated with this uh, device. And then it opens the pump device. And then this, these are the two it's trying to read. Um, say uh, these uh, GPIO, active low and the direction, these two are associated with this device. And then it'll try to open them. That's when it detected that it cannot open it and it's busy. And then it goes and closes the files and exits the program. So you, that's how we mapped um, the subsystems with individual command lines. So in addition to that, this is a flow chart. We developed a flow chart to it um, that what happens. So we have, um, if, uh, anybody that's familiar with uh, software engineering, I mean, this is a, a general software flow, uh, flow chart that shows uh, the command flow or a process flow. It is showing here and that we try to open it. We couldn't open it, de detect detecting device busy condition and print status from close files. So that's what one of them is. So, and if you were to, um, if you were to look at, there are two aspects to it. We took the process, uh, the command out output that we have gotten and we mapped it. And then you can see that from this S trace output, you will see everything else that has happened in that system during that time. Um, it's you, this corresponds to this output corresponds. You can see the device in use right here. So it corresponds to that. 
and then it shows us um, how many uh, percentage of time it's spent and how long each one of those system calls took. So, and it'll give us um, activity on what has happened. And you, you probably saw mem map two in the previous slide, and then we can corresponding unmap. And so you can get a feel for what is all happening while this running. Any questions at this time before I switch into it? Go to the next slide. Okay, just, just go ahead and uh, type your, um, just ask questions or type them in the chat. Um, so this is a, not, a runtime context for what we have done. Uh, Raspberry Pi, Pi system, we ran it on Raspberry Pi. And then uh, during that time, we have identified common um, kernel functionality processes. Uh, these are all um, the subsystems that were invoked. SPI driver is the one you noticed that uh, when uh, SPI dev is being opened, that's where SPI driver, SPI dev driver comes in. And then you have SysFS, the driver files, uh, driver interfaces that are available that it exports. And then you have a GPIO and um, over the GPIO, we are talking to insulin pump. And then outside, right outside, you'll see continuous glucose monitor and night scout. Night scout is the device. Um, so that's, this is the hardware part of it. And then how Raspberry Pi, Linux running on Raspberry Pi is managing that device. So from looking at this, um, a few things um, we can already identify as uh, important Linux kernel subsystems for us. One is that we, SPI dev driver, if there are any changes to the SPI drive, uh, dev driver that we know that we have to go and look at our workload and see our workload is, um, there are no regressions and that our workload is functioning well. And then the GPIO a subsystem, for example. So those are the kinds of the high riders besides the other things that, um, that could have regressions. Um, the other areas are common to process management. I mean, if you can't start a process that you would already know. Some of the process management things I put them in a different bucket of a common functionality. And whereas SPI driver, as SPI dev driver and uh, interfaces and then GPIO would be something that we cannot, funk, our workload will not run um, if there are problems um, or regressions in that area. So I will leave you with the, these two blogs in here. Uh, to read more about this, um, this the bottom one we uh, uploaded this to. I mean, we upstreamed this. This is part of the kernel documentation now, so you can see that we uh, went and um, went and do documented it and may upstreamed it, so that it's available for people in the kernel. Um, so um, that's pretty much end of my presentation and if you have any questions go go for the questions sure i would have a question if mm -hmm. you go one slide back you were yeah. there was the picture of the continuous glucose monitor and uh, also mm -hmm. the night scout is there some interaction between the Raspberry Pi and the uh, Night Scout or the, I guess also with the glucose monitor, they need some interaction. Is there some wireless connectivity then? So this means you would run, depending on the commands, you would see the different subsystem then. So then Correct. the trigger other ones, yeah. And is there Correct. a wired mm -hmm. connection then from, looks like there is a GPIO and then there's a direct connection to the insulin pump. I always thought it my understanding was it was wireless kind of thing, so. Oh yeah, I mean, so yes, um, the rig uh, connection is wireless connection. 
so you will it that would be um, that happens on um, Broadcom, Broadcom um, Ethernet interface, network driver interface. So when I'm showing this, I'm just showing the connections. This is not the real connections, but more of what I mean is these uh, these arrows indicate input and output process. So yes, you're right. It's a um, it's a wireless connection. Okay. And do you consider to add other tracing mechanisms, tools to get a deeper knowledge, or do you say we're standing here and we would go to go for F trace or uh, adding some other tools? Though from the automotive work group, we recently also discussed if we maybe add uh, system tap tap track on it to just get also another representation of it, because I know it's used in automotive to get boot time optimization track down bugs and so on. Mm -hmm. You can do more. Um, F-trace, for example, we can use a function level tracing with F-trace and say um, any specific functions we are interested in at the kernel uh, level, if we can identify that and system trap is another good one to be able to use that. So for us, uh, uh, what we are running into is uh, we might not um, do anything more with open APS unless we have access to a rig. We are running into some issues with ac uh, having access to a rig. So, however, we, uh, uh, as for, that is for uh, medical working group, right? And then the other areas um, that we can start looking at is, um, we are, uh, I, I'm currently doing um, analysis for RT Linux, real-time Linux um, one, in that one, I might do, be able to do more uh, tracing uh, for, with one, one of the, uh, during part of that analysis, which we are planning to present. Uh, Ilana and myself are doing that work, and then we'll be presenting that in, in Prague. So we are continuing it, not on OpenAPS. Okay. So to answer your question completely. Yeah, thanks a lot.